ja, 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 ja. So I grew up in a village in Belize called Hatteville, or is known as the Old Hatteville. I was the second to youngest out of a family of six children. We all used to live together in a, um, in a three bedroom house um, for the eight of us, including my mother and father. But throughout the years, I started to realize that the family had begun to say, fell apart. Growing up in a small, small village um, called Hatteville here in Belize, a it, it, it was it was very hard and challenging, especially growing up in a separated um, family home where all of my siblings um, they went to different um, gardens and others to take care of them. And well, well, my peer, my mother and father they separated, and I was the unlucky last one who didn't have a um, place to live. And everything changed after a hurricane hit her country and destroyed her village, especially the wooden house um, in the village included our little blue one. I know that just made everything worse because uh, we didn't have much. And little we had was destroyed so um my parents went to ask the government for um for those that they were giving out to people who were affected by the hurricane but that took a while so in the meanwhile um in the meanwhile my other siblings and stuff they were they were they went to different um people to look after them it, it was just me my mother my father and my two sisters and as time passed one of my other sisters she went to a guardian to look after her and uh, as the the week passed as well, it just became harder. And my dad, he just picked up and um, he also left us. He left my mom for another woman, even for a bigger family. I don't know what, what was the reason, but um, yeah, so he left us and he just got harder. Um, so it was just me, my mom, my older sister, and one. And well, my older sister, she had a kid as well, so she would often go to Billy City to her boyfriend to um. We should normally go and come so it was just like me and my mom and as the time passed i started to realize that my well my mom she became lonely too so um she started to even go to belize city as well she would usually go and come and then well, i was the only one who, who was with her so i would sometimes follow her to belize city and even come to a point where I, well she moved to belize city as well and i moved with her and we we would usually like go to different we live in all different areas in belize city in Crowell, in the Abra, on Kelly Street, and in all different areas, and I would follow her um, until one incident where what happened, which led us back to living in Hattieville, was when um, on Kelly Street I actually got when I got a second degree burn. All these cars are here. I got a second degree burn. Keith and the rest of siblings they raise up with their man and pa, but like when they become like teenagers, so the mother and the father broke up. The Pagan separate the Magan separate So, um, Keith, my mommy, may end up carrying him and Joshua. A little younger brother, believes that he's going to live. And apparently, what happened, and I never liked the idea that Keith may going to believe that he's So, I gone to the house and gone and get Keith, but apparently, Keith may get a burning in my face. And then I start to go off because then I say, that not really make no sense for you to carry the leave why there and I gone and I bring back Keith and the, um, the leave brother. So what happened to me, you know, they go and they a while. I don't know who may burn, who may, who may get burned. Mm. You know how you may get burned, Keith? Yes, like yes. I remember the story like it was like yesterday, it was a Saturday, well a Sunday afternoon. They were doing a barbecue in the, in the backyard. When um, the guy the guy was actually lighting the coal with um, with gasoline, with a gallon of gasoline, and then, so he he lit the um coal, and then the the, the entire bottle was blazed on fire, and me and my um, another guy who was playing little guy who was playing in the yard, but I saw it and I saw the the, the fire, and he, he threw the gas on the um the bottle on, on the on the grass and the entire um ground blazed on fire, so I saw it and I got frightened because I saw the fire and then there was like a gate right on the side which lead to the um to the road to run out. So I started and I just I start to run through the gate. And the same time I think he picked up the, the, the gallon to throw it through the same gate which had a drain which had um he picked it up probably to throw it through the same gate, but same time I was running through the gate, so at the same time he threw it I was running out and by the time he let go the bottle it was probably too late and he saw me running through the gate as well and my entire body blazed on fire. So that was <laughs> that wasn't a good feeling at all. But, and um so I rushed to the hospital. I was in the hospital for 10, 
10 days, that was 10 of the most painful days of my life. Um, and then the news reached Hatterville, I went to reached Hatterville, um, all of my family, my friends, um, even my dad came to visit me in the hospital who left us, who left. And I decided to call Keith and Michelle up and ask if he could please assist with Keith so my Keith could go, go live there. After I recovered, so my sister went, then my mother went, and it was one day when she went, my, well, my mom went, and she, she didn't come back. And days passed, days passed. I was there. My sister would come back, and then she just come back, and she told me that um, my mom won't come back. It hit me like, um, so will, will I go to visit with her or not? But no, um, there was like no contact or no, um, nothing. So I was there, you no know, eight year old kid, um, without any, um, I, 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 I was scared, I was sad. I was just waiting as the days passed, just waiting for mommy to come back home. And, um, she didn't come back. So I was at, at the age of eight years old. Um, I had to. I had to. Um, I had to find uh, my own food to eat. I had to so sleep alone in, in the house. The house was actually. Um, it was close to the burn ground. And we're in the bush, I was, I was really scared to go. Um, but I still went. I would sometimes go to my aunt's the house, would we'll stay there, and there's was, was no baker for food sometimes. Um, I was still going to school, um, not knowing how the school fees was being paid, but I was still going to school. I remember I used to soak a rim in, 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 a, in a small container with some rainwater in, in, a, in the morning. So when I came back um, for lunch, the rim, would, the rim would have already been soaked, and I could have eaten the rim in before going back to school. Uh, I used to even eat a dollar orange for the day which kept me full so i i was i was happy but i used to always watch like my friends and um cousin different you know different people with different lifestyle which which was better than mine one lucky day um which i was walking i was walking well coming back from from my friend house i was coming back and i was just walking you know with my, with my head down watching the floor no confident without like no reason <laughs> walking without no reason to live I was really sad that day I could remember. I was really, really sad. I was like, uh, I was in thinking about thinking about life and thinking about what's next and what will I do. You know, um, I remember <laughs> they used to call me head one, bag of one and different stuff, you know. Well, I was pretty malnourished. But that day I was walking by passing my aunt's house there in, in Hattie. In Hattie, I was passing by her house and I, I heard someone say, keep, keep, keep. And I, like, I was like, is that, is that myself? Is that, is that God? Is that, who is who? So I, I, I picked my head up and I looked around and I was like, where is that noise coming from? And then when I listened, it was coming from my aunt house. She was on the veranda shouting, um, Keith, Keith. She was like, Keith, Keith, go and get ready. Go and get ready. Your, your aunt from Bonapan is coming for you. Um, you're going to live, you're, you're going to go and live with her. So I was like, huh, me, me, I need Keith. <laughs> so. I was like, without any hesitation, I, I was quickly ran, well, not even to pack my clothes because I only had one shirt that, to go and live with my aunt. Keith was the only one who didn't have anybody to take him, so if one of us could come for him. So my sister, younger sister, if it was here, and she said, okay, go for Keith, and then keep him for a while, and then I will try and get him to go to the States with me. So we went for Keith, and when we got there, he looked so dumb, I don't know. Thinking about like I just still want to cry just the way how he looked at that time they saw like he had the world upon his shoulder and so when we explained to him that we were going to take him back to Belmopan he didn't say anything his sister said no worry kid and take good care of you and everything and he didn't say anything he was just like okay and he we, we were walking going down the road and I said do you eat and he said no so we stopped at a restaurant and buy him a burger but while walking to the restaurant all you could see, he didn't say anything, but he was crying silently. His tears were just coming down his cheek and he was just crying. Because it's like disrupting his whole life, you know.
yeah, 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 uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, uh. Yo, I'm off the block, busy with the stocks, trying to feed my people so I'm learning about the crops. If you're looking for the crops, then you're searching for some green. I'm trying to see my dreams so I can cop to the purple scheme, yo. From there, my aunt came for me. Um, I would thought out excitement, sadness, well, sadness because of how I was leaving the the, the, the village or the, <laughs> the entire country, which I call Hatteville. I thought that Belize was just Hatteville and Belize City, which I went to Belize City probably one time. So I thought that the entire country was just Hatteville and Belize City. Um, so I was like, bon pan, bon pan. am I going to, to America? Am I going to States? <laughs> so I was like, really like, I was like, Excited because I thought I was going to states, <laughs> so I, with total excitement because I was going to state, which was not which was not state, which it, it was actually Bonpan, the capital of Belize. And so we brought him, stop at the market, we brought him shoes and a couple clothes. We catch the bus, um, and they was coming with the bus and they was singing, you know, stuff I didn't even saw. The venue existed, there were some tall buildings, some beautiful cars. If you reach the Bonpan, I probably will. You see those like many, many different, different, like, I was like, wow, like, is this Belize? Is this like, is this, what is this? And after a little while, we were kind of surprised because he could catch the bus without any problem. He goes to the school and come home back with him. Try hurry get the bus to pick you up because we know why he last. Next thing we know, we did a bus. By the time we listen, we can't find people who can keep the outside the wait. Hey, he do not find a way home a long time. Toes, toes, red. So now as I start a new chapter in my life in a, with, a, with a new family, a new school, well not a new school at the moment because I was still commuting from Hatteville to um, Bonopan so I can finish um, Standard 4 because I was soon finish, it was just a couple months then I'd have finished Standard 4 in Hatteville so I was still commuting but starting a new life with surrounding opportunities, it feel great and I really, I, um, I thank God for my aunt, for my aunt Sheila, she really rescued me. Um, through the blessing of God, she really uh, took me in as one of her own kids. Uh, she she had four kids, and all of them were already old and successful. And I think she was a bit, a um, couple more years, and she was going to retire. But she still saw that she um she could have helped me, and she took me in as one of her own. He was very quiet. Then we got him into school up here. He was bullied a bit, you know. And so I always try to encourage him and encourage him, and then you see he just started to open up a little bit. He started to draw a lot more, practices drawing and stuff like that. And the, one of our goals, uh, my goal for him was for him to finish high school. I was there in, in Bonpan, you know, the difference of different uh, friend, different mindset. And this just opened my mind to a different picture of life. Uh, with, well, without no siblings in, 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 this, in the um, school, without no one, I really didn't even knew no one. I went to a school, diff well, this is a total new community, a new school, new everything. So it was, a, it was like a fresh start that God gave to me, for me to be um, someone great. You have to make sure you get enough grade to go in a compre. I said, because I was about to retire at that time. I said, that's the only school that I would be able to afford, you know. And he said, okay, so we got people for helping with his maths and in his English so he could pass and there was this one teacher who said when I told the teacher what was my goal she was like Chah, that never happened that one never happened and I said you watch me you will see this happen Keith attended the Open Comprehensive School after successfully completing his primary education at Garden City Primary School and throughout his years there he continued to strive for excellence. Initially, in his first year, he had some challenges. However, Keith grew and developed academically. 
and was able to successfully complete his four years at Dumbapan Comprehensive School. So the skinny kid who went to a new school and stuff, you know, being skinny and stuff and not knowing anybody, you know, you get bullied and you get bullied. So, but the good thing is that for, I, was a, well, I was a nice kid who really had a goal to be someone great and just to be inspiration to others. When his grade came out, he did exceptionally well. You know, and he get to go to Compre, Belmopan Comprehensive High School, which was what I wanted because it was affordable because it was a government high school. First farm, he just struggled. He struggled through first farm. He was, he didn't make it. So what we did, we, they had, at that time, they had an offer summer school. And so I sit in there and I said, look, this is your last chance. Boy, when I went to high school, you know, it's normal for a teenager boy to be going in into that from a from a little from a little young young kid to into a teenage you, you tend to go in that feeling of thinking that you're a man but good thing for my independent aunt who who took me and who was my well she was my my mother my father she really groomed me into the man i am today i feel the first form but good thing there was summer classes which you can um you could have did and once you pass the summer class you tend to well you get promoted into the into the next form so I did that and I remember she was like, I want, I'm, I'm going to pay for summer class for you and you better pass. And I told her, I promise you I'm going to pass. I'm going to make it for this. This is the last, I'm gonna, the last time I'm going to fail. I'm going to make you um, proud. We figure you have but we want the official word this way. He don't come tell it even. I said, well, I just hope if you tell her in person, we worry in it. <laughs> I mean, he cried. That he was so happy. Like he just cried. Until I graduated from high school, which I promised her. And I and I break I will actually break the family curse of my um, biological siblings, which I was the first um, person um, out of my family biological family to graduate from high school, which I was the second to youngest. He did good again. He graduated. We went to parents' night. He was all excited. He was crying because like he was the first one from their family to actually finish high school. His mother came up to the um, graduation and everything. We had a little celebration for him. And he did well. Um, from there, I remember that year was where, in 2018, that was the year my entire life changed. That was the year I, I take a big leap in Bawampan, which called the Educo Gym, Belize. I got a job with him, for him at Educo with my son. I said, you know something, the cleaner is up. You could always do that little work, do the cleaning at night, and you have your own little pocket money because you need to understand in life, you have to work for what you want. This is an international franchise. So I was a cleaner for the gym uh, for to be able to get my extra cash for um, school, you know, for lunch and stuff and to buy whatever I want to buy. So I was working there uh, as a cleaner. No one didn't knew that actually, none of my friends didn't know I was a cleaner. And I was cleaning um, to get my cash, but I was cleaning, I was going to, I was cleaning like after seven at night, which is the fun time to go and play ball, to go and hang out, to go and not to have fun as a, as a young person, but I, I, I told him, no, I need to go to the gym, I need to go, I need to go and train, <laughs> which I was not, I was actually a cleaner. What do I really want? Um, I'm at a stage right now, I was saved. I was saved from a, from a car near, near death experience. Um, so like to get into this, um, this stage of life, no, this opportunities and this, what do I really want? Um, I remember I, I sat down for two months, even afterwards, I, when I went afterwards, I went after two months, I went <laughs> to the park and then my friend was like, Keith, Keith, where you were? We were the entire two months. Like, they were like, Oh, you been gone, why? I told them, I told them, I, I, I'm gone to States. You know, I went to States. <laughs> I went to America. But at the end of the day, I was right up the street, right at home, in my room. In that two months time period, I really invested in that time myself. I found out that, okay, I was working in the gym. I was still working in the gym. So I was going from the home to the supermarket and to the gym. But no one didn't even, no one um, didn't saw me on, on the street. And then I put together like, okay, you want to be inspiration, you love to be inspiration to others, Keith. Um, you want to make an impact in the in your community and in your country. You want to to be a change and to, to help the change in the young people like that, to teach them that doesn't matter where you came from, to eat in um, dollar orange for the day or soaking your, your chicken noodle soup in a container with to cooking on the stove, um, to having one shirt. Um, you want to be that example and that inspiration to others. He was the cleaner. When the cleaner stopped work, I said, you know what, Keith, we don't have to hire nobody. You could get this job and you could make that extra money. So you have your own pocket money because that's how 
we were raised in my family and how I raised my kids that you want nice things you can do your little extra work and buy your stuff so he got that job and he was still working at that job when he graduated but he wanted something else to do so I said to him I said you like training so why don't you talk to your boss which is my son Albert talk to him and explain to him that you want to volunteer to learn to train so that when there's a vacancy you will be an easy shoe in Keith why don't you um, ask your employer um, to even to be a volunteer staff for a month and also to, to see if you like it and to, to give it a try and then I was like that's a good idea and I remember one night, like, one night I went I was cleaning there and I asked I asked my boss I told him can I, can I speak to you for a while and he was like okay yeah I sat there and talked to him tell him okay I want to be a trainer he was like how about you want to be a trainer I said I want to be a trainer not knowing me well a skinny kid across the table weighing just 130 something pounds <laughs> want to be a trainer so I, I I wasn't even like um worrying about how I look or stuff I was just worrying about I want to be a trainer I want to make a difference I want to be an inspiration I want this I want that I want that and I will transform my body well it wasn't even long I think it was like what, two weeks two weeks when the guy went to the states that was and he got the job I've been working for days. Every song I'm at flames. When I get on that stage, I ain't playing no games. I've been working for days. Every song I'm at flames. When I get on that stage, I ain't playing no games. Yo, scholar, why they really talking about where they say that we can never ever be great? I just look them in the face like what? Uh -huh. Every time that I flex, show they run. So I ain't never said shots, but they duck. I be coming through, looking big like the Hulk. Say they want it, but they scared like some chumps. Feeding the streets, they been starving for months, then they wonder why I celebrate. I be taking no L's, watch me elevate. I be working on the low with the flow in my prime with the rhyme, cause ain't no other rapper with a shine like mine. Name me your flow, that be nicer than this. Colder than ever, no ice on my wrist. Swerving in lanes like I got me a whip. Pull up to collect, then I pull up and dip. Name me your flow, that be nicer than this. Colder than ever, no ice on my wrist. Swerving in lanes like I got me a whip. Pull up to collect, then I pull up and dip. Matter of fact, watch me rollin' with my seat back Give them hell when they wonder where I be at Don't get lost in the sauce when you see how I drip Can't spare you no chain, so here go a tip I've been working for days Every song I'm at flames When I get on that stage I ain't playing no games I've been working for days Every song I'm at flames When I get on that stage I ain't playing no games Darnie, what you finna do when they get up in the game And you hit them with the facts? I'ma just look at them and laugh Cause the music never lacks You can go into the staff Go back nothing and push my buttons Zool get a tight then detached from your cousins Man, that's something Afro bumping Flow McDonald's is what you loving mm -hmm. But like for real I'm trying to collect these scenes Before I become a scene to kill off all my amigos Although it's only like Chico Kim and Fitness and free clothes Only Supreme and J No cheap loafers now reload I'ma never even But you still catch your shots Big attention not to mention You are opping you fly Your paper all go hard like a rock With all hits Red socks run away And your car just like his best rock Imagine me spazzing the fan And lots of these manicures Panicking they see danger Attacking manager and they walk in the and pick up a racket and get away while I'm racking and hitting like racket check to cover the habit of working all day and night. Tracks to national take flight. Son of a stun, man, I stay bright. I'm eating competition like a great white. I've been working for days. Every song I'm at flames. When I get on that stage, I ain't playing no games. I've been working for days. Every song I'm at flames. When I get on that stage, I ain't playing no games. in the gym I was reading on the, the bulletin the mission and vision for the gym it was like really like quite um, interesting and, and quite um it's more than just a gym so uh, I was reading I was watching other trainers training I was seeing how some of the clients they went in the gym like some of them went in the gym sad and then they came out they came out like bright and excited so I was like huh <laughs> did they just went in like a therapist and stuff you know clean and I was watching that and uh, well I, I went I started to exercise and all. I, went, I started to experience the exercise in myself. I felt, I felt like I felt. I love that feeling of how you feel after you exercise and just those muscles sticking out and uh, you know what? you're working on your entire body. And I, I, was, I started to love like muscle. And I could well from from a young age also. I used to watch those guys on the TV and on the internet. Those you know big muscle guys with the six packs and the big chest and the big arms. 
And you know, I was like, I wonder how it feels to get, you know, to get like a body like that. I wonder how the confidence you will have, like the, the limit you will put to, there is no limit you will put on yourself. And even to the, the easiest, well, because you know, some motivation is how easy it is to, you're gonna be to get to get females. How easy it is. So I was like, huh. So I started exercise and stuff, and I remember I went from 129 to 143 to 143 pounds. Um, but with that, that same the 2018, I was still backtrack on it. The same 2018 was when, um, like I said, my entire life changed. I graduated from high school with a technical diploma, which I, I wanted to be an architect, but it wasn't. It wasn't that something I, I I really wanted wanted to be. I just wanted to be because I love to draw. That was my interest back then in high school. But that same summer of 2018 was when you know summer you usually go to summer camps and basketball camps and different camps or different vacation you go on. But I I um actually stayed at home for the for the entire two months. I stayed at home and I really lost invest time in myself. I invest time in what I want for my next um, step in life. So with the gym and just putting all the dots together, I was like, the gym is it? The gym. I love the feeling of the. I love the feeling of, of how you feel after your exercise. I love the mental aspect of it, which the Duco gym but they really go in depth to it, which they really focus on that holistic approach to fitness. Um, so it's like it is what um, um, the dots they do come there. So I quickly ran. Remember one day I ran to my aunt. She was in the kitchen. I was like, aunt, aunt, aunt. Um, we put them together so with that mindset of you wanting that um, goal so bad not worrying about any thoughts about how you how you currently are just that you will make that difference and you make that change to make that goal happen I told him that I'll, um, I, I will um, volunteer for a month to to train and then um, to do the volunteer so after that I took the volunteer I took the month he gave me the month and I I was there before the gym opened, I was there, I was the last person to left. I, I sat with my notes, you know, with the kind I was watching the trainer's train, I was taking all notes, studying and stuff, and I was giving it my all, giving it my all I could give to get to really show that I want this job and to get the job. The, the opportunity came up and I just took it. And I even worried about how I look, even that even the clients they saw like there was like there wasn't even like, you know, um, this kind of trainer stuff. There was just like the energy and us the the different stuff that I brought in the gym was what they were looking like, the, the energy and also that not excitement. That was what they wanted when they come in. It's uh, someone who is energized and who's bright and, you know. So with you not even worrying about thought about, this this is uh, um, stuff that with you not worrying about thought or how you look and just focusing on what different you can make and how you can um, change yourself, that make an impact with others as well. And that same year, I started to work in, it was in 20, the 24th of September, 2018, I started to work in the gym. And uh, the same, well, the same year later on in the month in December was when, well, I was saving, you know, saving my money and stuff and just wanting to, um, making that more, that more, that, um, that leap and that, you know, that, uh, growing, I was just growing up with my mindset, with my life and just, so I, I actually moved out of my aunt house in the same December of that same year. I moved out um, and I went to live on my own. And um, that was like a next um, step in which, well, my aunt, she, she taught me how to cook, how to wash, how to do everything she taught me how to do. And I still had the, had the help from others who helped me away with it. Because um, you keep people around you who, who you want help from who you want to be like you keep people around you like that working in the gym you know start to learn more about the gym and what the gym really is about and the mission and vision for the gym and and uh everything like that and even the next following year i get the opportunity to, to go on a um a special um seminar which is the educo seminar in the atlantis bahamas so now just to make you guys pretty real clear about this is that from when i was small i even realized i i tracked it out that I used, to, I used to hear this commercial on TV. Atlantis. You know, Atlantis. The commercial was like, and I saw it and I was like, I really want to go, I really want to, go to, uh, to Atlantis, the water park, and you know, it's an aquarium and these sharks and these big fish and, and the, the beautiful um, buildings and the beach. I was like, I really want to go to Bahamas. I was from, I was a young age, not knowing that later on in my years, um, I would go to Atlantis and even going on a seminar that really teaches me how to really control my thoughts and, um, by me controlling my thoughts and being present that keep me that um, made me tap into my true nature and expressing from my true self which i can do what i truly love 
without any effort or without any thought and thought and just coming from that. So I went on the seminar in the Bahamas, which I even explained my, my mindset and my my mindset about the different stuff and sign different how people how people live out there and the different you know different levels to life and different stuff which is not really limited just to yourself. We went to eat out. I met people from all over where so you get different like I asked like different ideas of like how is the life over there, how is the life over there. You get to expand your mindset, not knowing the same little kid who grew up, who was raised up by himself, nearly died of starvation, who was eating, you know, the same dollar range for the day and having one shirt. You get this opportunity to get all of these stuff just from the same thing, having that vision of that clear result of what you really want. And everything does come to alignment when you're coming from yourself and what you really want. So be in this unique, unique Educo seminar. It really changed my, my entire world. It saved me also, it saved me from the matrix of life, the matrix of, um, you know, um, you ask most young, a young person what they really want for their life, they will even tell you, oh, I want a house, I want a nice car, I want a, a wife, probably some big name, um, and, that's, and that's it, probably, must go on a vacation, and that's it. Then when his brother, who was staying with the grandmother, was going through problems the same way, he was able to bring his brother and also help his brother so that his brother got a fresh start in Belmopan. The day my brother told me, hey, oh, I want you to come live with me. I'm like, okay then. Because my mind said on my heart, the heart to be like, so I'm like, I, like, I settled for it, I settled for anything. Like, anything will throw out to me, I settled for it. I settled for it. Mm -hmm. And then moving to Belmopan, no, that was a different thing. Yeah, you don't accept anything, you don't accept, you don't accept anything from people. It's a whole different thing. You work for your own thing, you, you, you're you, independent. He had everything planned out, he had his whole week planned out. He was busy, you know, like, literally no time to waste on, you know, things that won't benefit his life. Yet he, like, he would do, I mean, he would, like, he was spending time, spend his time doing, doing things that, you know, would benefit your life in a good way. And me, looking at that and talking to myself, sometimes I would talk to myself, like, sit down and say, like, that's what you really want. Because you came from this, and now you're seeing this, so what you really want. The first day staying here, knowing I live here, I was like, okay, I live here, so I feel excited. Like, okay, and I've got, well, and I've got that little normal because I live here now. Like, first thing I was I will change the way I dress. The jail, the way I talk to people, and you know, the way I carry myself. And like, from that day on forward, we're on great. And some of y'all know, I'm a, I'm a car dealer. But I really wanted to, you know, get more bigger in the car business. Know more about cars, and you know, in the next two years, or next two years, I could be the manager of the, the job where I'm working at. You know? And, you know, Bella Future, me and my girlfriend live in our own house, you know, and having our family and stuff together. And I must say that I am very proud of Keith for all that he has achieved thus far. Keith is destined for greatness. I was just tell a holy head and I, got, I am glad we hold our lippy self okay. on the up. They did stage, yeah? Yeah. I, I grow down. Yeah. And I expect he did this stage. He is way, way more expressive. That's one thing. So he is now more vocal. He has a higher level of self-expression. Apart from that, he is passionate about giving back and helping. So he's become a youth advocate um, from what I've seen getting out, meeting, interacting, and really encouraging younger people who can or possibly is in the same situation that he is because one of the things in Belize, people don't always tell you um, their situation. You won't know what someone's going through. They will keep that to themselves, but coming from that specific background, I feel like Keith is now able to relate and show people that a better life is possible. You just have to go with it, take advantage of the opportunities that you are given because life blesses you with opportunities. It's just what you do with them. So I do know he does quite a bit of work in terms of encouragement, in terms of trying to foster growth as best as possible um, with them. Apart from that now, I noticed that he is a lot more structured in what he does and has 
really, really big goals for his life, but more importantly, for the community and for the country in terms of how we can move forward, how we can all bring this together. And a huge part of that transformation for me personally that I saw was, I think it was 20, yeah, 2019, um, when he attended the Duco seminar in the Bahamas where he got training specifically on understanding your mind, understanding how it works, understanding really how to tap into that potential. And looking at him now, you see, you can see, especially, I know with this documentary, looking at where he is to where he is now, you will see that massive transformation in his life. Life is beyond just having those stuff. You can see most of those millionaires and billionaires that you see on the, on the internet and on YouTube, you listen to them, they're going to tell you they even have the yachts and they have the jets and they have millions and millions of dollars. They have the biggest of house, they have their family and stuff, but they still want, they, they like, something is missing, something is missing. So life is beyond, life is coming, you, you expressing, you doing what you love on a daily basis and just coming from your true self. Um, so in that same year of 2019, um, when I went to the seminar, my goal was to come back and just really making an impact in the youth's life in Belize. Um, same way, um, they said, well, this is my goal, so I'm making a change in mind as well. But just making that big difference and being an inspiration to others that it doesn't matter what it comes from. It doesn't matter where you're at right now. You can achieve and you can do whatever you want to do. You can do it. So when um, I came back, my first, I came back in December, I went, for, I went for a month in the Bahamas. I was just supposed to go for two weeks and I ended up to go for an entire month. This is just to show you how, you know, how God, um, how the universe, how life set things up for you when you want something, but when you're working um, towards it. He's still at the gym, very swell headed, always showing his abs, every mirror he passes, he's posing, thinking that the world revolves around him, making up nice little stories like he just saw two traffic officers out there and the ladies traffic officer and they said that's how they want to take him. What they want for Christmas is him because they want to take him home for Christmas. This little boy is so full of himself. But that is key. And up to this point, we can really be grateful and thankful, you know, that to see how God has transformed him from this once very shy and insecure child to a more confident person. He went to school, finished his school, which is still a continue for a nice studies now. And I'm proud of him to be a village boy. It's just the impact it, 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 it's made because a simple conversation, a simple um, the word. Or you see, um, these things make a difference. My goal is to even become one of the um, the ma manager of one of the gym in Blitz because we plan to expand the gym even more to different um, districts and stuff. So my goal is to grow more with the gym, is to grow more with the youths, which is to um, continue and even bigger making that different in my community and, and in the country Yo, and even exporting bigger in the world as well trying to feed my people so i'm learning about the props if you're looking for the crops then you're searching for some green i'm trying to see my dreams so i can cop the purpose scheme yo i'm off the deep end kid i got a vision yo i'm trying to see fan win from how i'm living because i'm trying to gain the wisdom free my mind from a prison trying to beat the system as i'm faithful to the mission They wanna see me fall off, so what? They wanna know my next move, so what? I'ma do me, I'ma focus. They on that fake shit bogus. They wanna see me fall off, so what? They wanna know my next move, so what? I'ma do me, I'ma focus. They on that fake shit bogus. Hold up, hold up, ain't nobody wanna see me get it. I be making ways with a credit. And I was busy running up the block when my songs got hot, so I keep it authentic. Yo, anybody want it, they can get it. Yo. But if you move smart, then I'm with it. Yo, Yo. spit so fast, got me you Saint Bolt. I can't talk cause your boy so woke. Pushing my team like I'm Dre Mark Green. Yeah. Laugh on a holler, my last name lean. Living my life as I'm living my Whoa. dreams. Cut to words, so I peep their schemes. Yo, pull up, pull up, pull up on it. What? I'm peeping the game like an audit. Yo. Yo, push up, push up, push up on it. Mm. We're dripping like we beat the faucet. Yeah. Uh, dead or alive, I'm the greatest. Yep. Sky beat the one, it's the matrix. Sky. Breaking them records, I play them like checkers. They jump in and move it while we be just cruising. You're dead or alive, I'm the real. Uh, Homies, they're wild like gorillas. Uh, Looking for drugs, I'm the plug. Uh, My lyrics be better than drugs. Oh. Yeah, heard of the boy, now they holler. Who? I'm focused, I'm looking for guala. What? Dead or alive, I'm the trillist. Yeah. The dungeon is spot, we the illest. Yeah. 
heard about flames, now they with it. What? The hustle is here, we gon' get it. Yo, Yo. dead or alive, I'm the trillist. The dungeon is spot, we the illest. They wanna know my next move, so what? So what? They wanna see me fall off, so what? So what? And I'ma do me, I'ma focus. focus. They on that fake shit, bogus. bogus. They wanna see me fall off, so what? So what? They wanna know my next move, so what? So what? And I'ma do me, I'ma focus. Yo. They on that fake shit, bogus. Holla, holla. Let me put on glasses so that I can focus. I'm atrocious on the beat while you bogus. And you know this, man. Like I'm smoking on Friday, I'm doing this model while turning it sideways. Get sumo cum laude with verses. And these purses don't know what my verse is. No such thing like a curse. I believe in these churches and virtues that lose in their mind of a person. You can comprehend all the moves that I make. I pass you without fake, no dancing, looting the lace. Cause to you it's the game, that's why you're losing your dame. I'm Bowser, your Mario, see it, eh? In this world, I be taking your girl, make her wake up on her. Are you jealous? Cause she play with my curl. Please pay attention, listen to my word. Wanna see me fall off, taking my turn. They wanna turn. know my next move, so what? So what? They wanna see me fall off, so what? So what? And I'ma do me, I'ma focus. focus. They on that fake shit, bogus. bogus. They wanna see me fall off, so what? So what? They wanna know my next move, so what? So what? And I'ma do me, I'ma focus. Yeah. They on that fake shit, bogus. Holla. They wanna know my next move, so what? So what? They wanna see me fall off, so what? So what? And I'ma do me, I'ma focus. focus. They on that fake shit, bogus. bogus. They wanna see me fall off, so what? So what? They wanna know my next move, so what? So what? And I'ma do me, I'ma focus. Yeah. They on that fake shit, bogus. Holla.